Hey y'all, we are at another lesson at Hummy's World in the Blending Mode class. And this lesson is for the Vivid Light. If you're just now finding or stumbling into one of our videos, please visit the site and start at the beginning and go through them in order. Uh, we are uh, going through them in order. And we've uh, been through the Darken and the lighten and we're all the way down to vivid light now this section is called the contrast so we have lighten section uh, I mean darken section lighten section and the contrast section and I think um, everyone's beginning to understand a little bit better why this is called the contrast section because so far every um, blending mode in this section has combined one of the blending modes from heat, the darken and one of the blending modes from the lighten and um, if you you know have both a, uh, a change in the lighten and a change in the darken change in the light areas and a change in the dark areas you're going to have contrast so that's why this is called the contrast section um, and it often I think it's the most usable section because you are using uh, both of these. So the vivid light combines the color dodge, which is right here. And if you want to go back and review that <coughs> to see what the color dodge does. And it uh, combines it with the color burn. You see those are both right in the middle of each of those sections. And uh, you'll remember um, the overlay uh, blended the multiply in screen and the soft light also blended the multiply in screen but made it softer. So now we've jumped down one to the center one. That's kind of a visual to help you remember what it does. Um, values greater than 50% gray use the dodge, the color dodge, and values less than 50% gray uh, burn or um, use the color burn. And let's look at our graphic as we've been doing with each class. And we're going to change it to vivid light. And this is what it does. And you see this is the 50% gray color in the middle. There's no change. But everything up here in our uh, gradient area on either side of it makes a change. And so uh, it go these right in here are black and you have a whole lot of white so vivid light really means vivid I mean you look at the contrast it has from a whole lot of dark colors to a whole lot of white colors and um, the, the the middle neutral colors have some more pleasant colors so because of this you have to remember when you're choosing what you blend that that you have to have a for this one to work well you have to have a really um, neutral almost 50 percent gray colors in there if you get a texture that's really white what's it going to look like um, and it, if you get a texture that's really dark what's it going to look like it's not going to work real well and um, we're going to go take a look at that so here is my sample layout it I played with it a little bit too long this morning. Couldn't quite get it where I wanted it. But I, I had to say self, it's done. And so um, here is the texture. I'm going to take it off vivid light to normal. And you see I've also lowered the opacity to 53%. But you can see here, it. this one's a real yummy one. <laughs> it does have a few uh, sequins in it spread out here but um, it's got a lot of uh, this uh, you know crisscross textures in it uh, lines um, 
and uh, it's but you can see uh, on the grayscale side it yes the little lines the white lines are pretty white and there's a few areas that are a little darker but for the most part this is more uh, in the 50% gray area so let's deconstruct what I've done and I started out with this image. Now I actually, I'm going to duplicate this so you can see what I did. I actually started out with it, um, hold down my shift keys so it resizes proportionately there. I actually started out with it like this and I changed my layout, uh, my, my image so many times playing. And I um, got a color for the background that I thought kind of blended in uh, the best um, in all the at least it blended in in the top area very well not not so much in the bottom area and I applied the blending texture layer that's so yummy I look at that I just like oh that feels good so I changed it to a vivid light and I was like ah that's kind of cool you can see all those little white scratchy lines but it is a little bit um, harsh the vivid light is harsh so I lowered the opacity till it felt soothing and I landed about 53 percent so we can see the before and the after and I added my text and I thought well that's good I could stop right there well I could it blends in really nice up here with the color at the top not so much down at the bottom and I thought well I didn't like the way this uh, you know was so stark what could I do with it and um, I thought well uh, let's get a rid of this larger one that I did and go back to my original one so I I made it smaller and I thought let's add a frame and so here's how I made the frame I actually duplicated this layer control J held down my control well, I guess you don't need to do that even. You can just do um, Control U and uh, take out all the color. You can either change, I guess you have to do the lightness. Just make it all the way dark or all the way light. You can make it white. Let's just make it white. So this, basically what I'm doing is making a shape the exact same size as the color. And then I got my rounded rectangular tool and I have the corners at well I have them from the last video I did at 118 I just kinda left it at that and I made this uh, shape in here um, let's bring it down to where we're working it's white so we need to uh, make it a color just so we can kinda see what it's doing Ooh, look how yummy that is blending um, so I made it just a little bit smaller and I'm just using this kind of as a template because um, I'm not I'm not going to actually use this I'm just using it uh, to cut okay and so I made it just a little bit smaller and I can even make it invisible now I'm going to hold down my control key and click on that layer to get a selection or marching ants of it I'm going to go back to my original layer which I'm making my frame and I'm going to hit a layer mask and um, you can see that it well mostly because uh, my foreground color is white <laughs> when I first did this I had to invert colors but if you end up with uh, if you end up with the opposite of this with the outside white and the inside black just hit control I to invert see so you can see I ended up with this and actually I do need to hit control I <laughs> okay control I okay so this is what I wanted I wanted only um, the outer area of this showing to make my frame um, and then I just began playing with it I'm going to hit control U um, colorize let's see get I need to get some color in here actually 
uh, what I did was I made this vivid light because we are doing a vivid light. Let's get a little bit of uh, color in this. Um, now let's hit Control U, just any color. Colorize. Let's get some color. It's not wanting to get color. Oh, it was. Okay, let's try that again. Look down here. Well, it was turning to green. Let's, uh, you know, hit control and get the selection and fill it with the, that foreground color. There we go. Now I got something going on. That foreground color I created. Okay, now control U. And I just mainly played around with the sliders until I got something I liked. I think I like it when it brings out kind of the purpley color in it, but not too much. And you remember, um, see if we go to um, white, uh, it just is white. And if we go down here to dark, you get uh, the colors that are too dark. So you need something pleasant out here in the middle because it's working with the vivid light blending mode. And I'm not going to spend a long time doing that. Um, but uh, you can see that's what I came up with. And then I added a, a drop shadow. And I'm not going to spend a long time with that because I did spend a long time with that before. And I thought to myself, let's go to the one I actually made. I thought to myself, uh, that looks good. Let me get rid of these extras. Uh, so there's the one I came up with. And I said, to my, and here's my uh, rounded area that I made to cut that with. And I said, that looks pretty good. We'll just leave it like that. And no, my mind gets going. I'm like, that's boring. We need more artistic. And so I uh, duplicated this layer. And I said, let's play with it. So um, I started making it smaller, and then I thought, oh, maybe we could just make it a square out here to highlight it. And I got down to here, and I said, oh, well, that's kind of cool. Maybe we can make that an oob. So I went back, and I extracted my flower, and there it is on a new layer. And now I have the oob look going on. But I still didn't like that, and I kept toggling back between this or something like this and I played and okay yeah it looks a little better if uh, if it's like that okay so that or that and I actually was leaning toward liking this better but I liked the idea of the oob so what I ended up doing let me go ahead and put these layers back on is combining them both and I said, well, why not just leave both of them on there? And so that's what I did next. But then I I didn't like, uh, you know, I, of course, I played and played around with this. And both of them are vivid light. And so I said, well, I don't really like the way this is getting too bright down here. And so what I did, I'm going to go to my third one. I kept this one so I could show you what I did or if I wanted to go back. So then this is my final one, and what I did was I came back in here with my black brush on my mask, and I uh, masked out this area here, uh, and um, remember black conceals, white reveals, and so that it wasn't vivid light upon vivid light where those two frames matched. And then I ended up with this kind of torn look in here. And I said, well, hey, that's pretty artistic. That looks good. And sometimes you just got to keep playing and playing and playing until you hit things that on accident and you say, well, that works. I'm still not sure whether I like this better or this better, but I played so long that we're going with this. <laughs> And uh, that's kind of what I did. And I look forward to seeing um, yours and what you do um, with this. And you know what? I'm sitting here looking at this and I'm thinking it needs a border all the way around. Let's go try it.
I'm just going to get a new layer and I'm going to make a selection right around the edge. I'm going to go to edit, stroke, and um, I think let's try about 10. Okay, that made a good size. Control D to deselect. And the color is not quite right. Um, let's get a. I know what I'm going to do. Get this. Get uh, the color from here and then control you and colorize. Now it made it that color from in there and that looks a little bit better. And actually I think that kind of helps pull it all together. Um, that makes it look good. Sometimes, you know, when you're done playing you come back and look at it later and you go, aha, that's exactly what I was missing. So, and that's kind of cool and grungy because it uh, blends in with the blending mode too. So it doesn't look very good without the blending mode. Actually it kind of does. But it looks even yummier with it. Okay, here we go again. Vivid Light, only use the texture I give you and only use Vivid Light and show me what you can do and give us your recipe. Um, copy the your um, get a screenshot of your uh, what you've done over here and um, share it with us and share us your uh, final image and that way we all learn together. Have a great day!